This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. I'm going to work through question three from the paper F9, March, June 2016 hybrid exam. Uh, so make sure you've got the question in front of you, that you've downloaded it from the uh, ACCA website. Uh, and let's have a look. It's a short question, or short in terms of uh, not much to read. Uh, Dariga is partly financed by 7% loan notes, which are redeemable at their nominal value of 1,000 per loan note in eight years' time. Alternatively, they are convertible after seven years into 110 ordinary shares uh, of Dariga Company per loan note. The ordinary shares are currently trading at $6.50 per share on an ex-dividend basis. The current cost of debt of the... Um, Convertible loan notes is 8%. And part A, six marks, says justifying any assumptions that you make, calculate the current market value of the loan note of Dariga using future share price increases of 1,4% to 6% per year. So part A, uh, we want the current value of the loan notes, and remember the market value. Uh, of debt uh, is the present value of the future receipts discounted at the investor's required rate of return. So we know the required return, there's no mention of tax, so the required return is the cost of debt of 8%. Uh, what are the expected receipts? Well, there's interest each year at a coupon rate of 7%, but uh, the problem is the redemption because they'll either get interest. Uh, for seven years and then convert to shares or they'll get interest for eight years uh, and then receive the cash redemption. So the first thing we have to do is decide will they convert after seven years? Or will they wait eight years? Uh, uh, for the redemption for cash. Now you don't need to write that down in the exam, it's just I'm trying to make it clear what I'm saying. But that's what we have to decide first. And it's what they expect they'll do. I mean they obviously don't have to decide now, they'll actually decide in seven years whether to convert or not. But today's market value is based on what they expect they'll do as of now. And so how will they decide? Well if they convert, Then uh, for uh, each loan note, they'll get 110 shares. And what do they expect the shares will be worth? The shares are currently worth $6.50. Uh, but it says uh, somewhere, oh yes, part one. Sorry, we're doing part one here. Uh, it says share price increases of 4% a year. So if they're expecting the share price to go up by 4% a year, in seven years' time, which is when the conversion would take place, um, the share price will have grown by a factor of 1.04 for 4% uh, to the power of 7 for seven years. And so if they convert, they expect they'll get to a 1.04 to the power, oops, 1.04 to the power of 7 times 650 times 110 shares. Uh, conversion, they reckon, will be worth 940.89 in seven years. Uh, the alternative, though, because we need to decide what we'll be expecting to do, the alternative will be to take cash in eight years. And how much will they get? Uh, it's redeemable at the nominal value. Uh, and so they'll get a thousand. And of course, if they keep them <clears throat> uh, for the extra year, you know, converting seven years, end of story, if they keep for the extra year and take the cash, they'll also get interest in that eighth year. And the interest is 7% on nominal. Uh, uh, so they'll get a thousand and seventy by waiting that extra year. So what will they expect they'll do? 
As of now, do they think they'll convert and take 940 in seven years? Or do they think they'll wait and take effectively 1,070 in eight years? Well, the way we can check is, uh, remember, their cost of debt is 8%. And so, waiting that extra year, let's discount the 1,070 for one year and then compare it with the 940. So if we discount that for one year, 1,070, uh, where are my tables? Discount for one year at, what was the rate, 8%. Mm, papers all over the place here. One year at 8% is 0 0.926. Uh, and so it's equivalent to, there we are, 990.82. I've discounted for one year because it's 1,070 in eight years. Discount for one year uh, is equivalent to 990 in seven years. And so we can compare. Uh, at the moment, they think if they convert, we'll get 940 in seven years. On the other hand, if they don't convert, they'll get the equivalent of 990 in seven years. And so it does look as though they'll convert. We'll, uh, sorry, they won't convert. So assume no conversion. And this is why the question says somewhere, um, justifying any assumptions. So I'm assuming no conversion, those workings justify it. Uh, and that's important because what follows, even if you decided they would convert, you'd still get mar marks for what follows. But now we can work out the market value, because on the basis that they don't convert, what's going to happen? Uh, on a thousand nominal, the par value, uh, they'll get interest, they're not converting, so they'll get interest for eight years. Uh, the coupon rate of 7%, so on a thousand, that's 70 a year. In eight years' time, uh, we've said that they'll redeem, take the cash, uh, the redemption will be a thousand. I know I wrote 1,070 before, but you know that's in the eighth year, so I've got 70 in the eighth year uh, in the interest stream, and then the thousand, the redemption. The market value is the present value at uh, the investor's required return, which here is 8%. And so standard discounting. The interest, we've got an eight-year annuity at 8%. The eight-year annuity factor is 5.747. And so the present value of the interest is 402.29. Uh, the redemption, the normal um, eight-year factor at 8% eight is 0 0.540, so the present value of 540, uh, which gives me a market value of 942.29. And so there's the market value for part one, uh, which was on the assumption that the share price increased at 4%. What about part two, though, which uh, asks us to do exactly the same thing, but the share price increasing at 6%. So this now should be pretty quick because we thought through what's happening. Uh, first of all, again, they've got the choice of convert in seven years. And this time, the, value, the worth, if that's the right word, of conversion, they'll get 110 shares. The current price is 650. But with a, a growth in the share price at 6%, it'll be 1.06 to the power 7 for seven years. The value of converting, 110, sorry, 1.06 to the power 7 times 650 times 110, um, it's 1,075.1, well, not worried about a bit of rounding, 
So that's um, what they expect uh, they'll be worth in seven years if they convert, or alternatively take the cash, which means waiting eight years. In which case they'll get a thousand, they redeemed at par, and also in that extra year, they will get one more year's interest again at 70. A thousand and seventy. Well, here I think that this, the decision or what they expect they'll do is pretty obvious. Either take a thousand and seventy five in seven years or wait an extra year and end up with less. And so this time we'd assume that they expect to convert. And so on that basis, now let's work out the market value. Again, uh, for a thousand nominal, uh, they'll get interest. Well, since we're assuming they'll convert, they'll only get interest for seven years at the coupon rate of 7%. So interest of 70 per annum. And in seven years time, uh, they'll convert. Uh, and the conversion is worth, what figure did I have? 1,075. I don't know why I'm worried about the cents, but still. And so there are the expectations. The market value, as always, will be the present value discounted at their required return, which is 8%. And so again, normal discounting. For the uh, interest, the annuity factor, 8% for seven years is 5.206. Uh, for the conversion, the ordinary factor, the present value of that uh, factor for seven years, 8% is 0.583. And so the present values, the interest, 70 times 5.206, uh, 36, oh, 364.42, uh, and the conversion, 1075.1, .1, 0.583. Is 626.78. And so the market value on that basis of that assumption, 364.42 plus 626.78, I get 991.20. Uh, Which I hope I've got my arithmetic right. I think that's correct. Bear with me. So that's part. A, six marks. As always, it seems to be taking me rather a long time because it's, I'm talking, explaining. It shouldn't take that long in the exam. Uh, but as always, do make sure you set out your workings neatly because uh, the, the six marks there aren't for the final answer. You know, even if you've made a mistake in your workings, an arithmetic mistake is just going to be half a mark. Uh, the marks really are for proving you know what you're doing. So at least there, uh, you know, I have got it right, but even if I've made a arithmetic mistake, I've written enough that it's, and it's clear enough that it's obvious to the marker that I'm trying to do it the right way. And so again, even if there had been a arithmetic mistake, I would get most of those six. Uh, remember also, you're aiming to get 50% on every question. Uh, here we've just made it six out of 10, but again, it only needs the odd mistake and I'm borderline and so make sure always that when you come to the written part part b uh, they always write something even if you don't really understand the question writing something sensible hopefully it'll get you a mark and even if it's only one mark which seems nothing if you were otherwise failing on 49 that one marks everything and here in fact it should be um, relatively easy to get most, if not all, of the marks. It says, discuss the limitations of the dividend growth model as a way of valuing the ordinary shares of a company. Now, I'm not going to write out in full here um, our talk, and it's wasting time to write it out in full. And in fact, in the exam, by all means, write it down as notes rather than essay. But do read the examiner's answer. The examiner always writes more than he expects because he knows people learn from it. 
So do have a read. But the points really you should be trying to make is first of all state what the dividend growth model says uh, before we start limitations. Now, when you value ordinary shares, we say the market value of shares uh, is the present value of future expected dividends. Uh, discounted uh, the shareholders required rate of return now I've not yet answered the question obviously but I think you need to write that down to prove you know what you're talking about if you want write down the formula but simply writing down a formula doesn't tell anybody very much but that's what we mean by the dividend growth model. That that's how we'll value the shares. And what's the problem, or what are the limitations? Well, there are really two big ones. The first is, how are we going to know what the future expected dividends are? All right, we know what the current dividend is, but what do we do? Um, we have to assume a, a rate of growth, you've seen numbers questions on this, current dividend 30 cents, dividends are growing at 5% a year, we use the formula. So the big limitation is estimating the future dividend growth rate How do we know? How do we know what growth shares are expecting? Are they expecting 2% growth? Are they expecting 10% growth? How are we going to estimate it? Uh, and slightly less of a problem, I feel, but still, uh, the formula we use, the only way we do it, is we do generally assume constant growth in dividends. Uh, which, of course, is unlikely to be the case in real life. Um, we can deal with funny growth rates. It would be messy and we don't. We simply use the formula. Uh, also, but I'm not going to go on here and I wouldn't in the exam. Um, it's not a question of what the actual growth is going to be. It's the rate of growth shareholders are expecting that determines the market value. And shareholders, I think, are likely to expect, oh, it'll grow at about 5% a year or grow at about 8% a year. Um, shareholders aren't really likely to be saying, oh, I think it'll grow 5% next year and then 8% the year after and so on. Anyway, I'm saying too much. Uh, but their limitations, getting the future expected dividends. The other big limitation, of course, I said the market value, present value of future dividends discounted at required rate of return. The other big problem is estimating the shareholders' required rate of return. In exam questions, you told, you know, shareholders require 10%, you stick it in the formula. But in um, real life, how on earth do you know what rate of return they'll require? Because the rate of return that they require uh, will depend on the level of risk. And okay, we can use things like capital asset pricing model to measure the risk and therefore determine the return they should require. Uh, but although in theory that's fine, again, there's practical problems. How do we know what dividends they're expecting or growth rate? How do we know what rate of return we require? So that's really all that's required for part B for the four marks. Uh, and again, I mean, perhaps write it slightly nicer than mine, but you don't need to write it out as an essay. It's better to make separate points, you know, and leave a line between each so that the marker doesn't get lost if it's just one long sentence that goes on and on. 
The danger is the marker falls asleep or misses some of the points uh, and you lose marks that perhaps you actually should have got. Anyway, there we are. Ten marks, and that's quite a nice question.